Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, A.C. Dunlap, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Joy in Our Town brings you the issues and problems that are faced in the local community with the hope of finding a solution. Our guest today for this segment is Ann Conley, supervisor of the School Nursing and Asthma Program for the Ohio Department of Health. She joins us today to share important information regarding asthma, along with how individuals can prevent and reduce the risk of having asthma attacks. Welcome. Thank you. How are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. Good. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. Can you share a little bit about yourself and about the history of the Ohio Department of Health? Sure, I have worked at the Ohio Department of Health for about 10 years this summer, mm -hmm. and I ha came on as the school nursing uh, consultant at the Ohio Department of Health. And in the past year, I have also added to that job and I'm now working with the asthma program. So. Uh, it, it's a nice fit because school mm -hmm. nurses work with children with asthma often. Okay. So it really just flowed very nicely, uh, the, adding that to my role. Okay. So in your current role, what are your responsibilities? I continue to work with school nursing, the school nursing program, and we provide education and training and resources for people who work in schools and really for nurses specifically who mm -hmm. work in schools and really anybody else who has any interest in school health. In the role that I'm here for today okay. about asthma, I work with a team. We have an epidemiologist, a program manager, um, a, a program consultant who's a social worker, and a public health nurse who works all in the asthma program. We have a grant from the uh, CDC, the uh, Centers for Disease okay. Control and Prevention. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to make sure that the person who has asthma has a seamless experience from their doctor's office, to the hospital, to the emergency department, to their school or workplace. Okay. So that's the goal. That's what we are working towards in our, in our, um, in our grant. And again, that's to make sure that um, fewer people have difficulties with asthma, that the person who has asthma mm -hmm. has a, a safer, healthier life. Okay, so can you tell us um, exactly what is asthma? Asthma is a chronic, meaning a long-term uh, disease of the lungs. It is not something, it can occur at any time in life. So sometimes young children get asthma and then it continues throughout the life. Sometimes people don't acquire it until they are el elderly. So okay. it really can affect you at any point in life. But it's a, it's a disease of the lungs where mm -hmm. the, uh, the, if you think about the lungs as a tree, you have the trunk that's thick and then it branches out into smaller airways. What happens with asthma is that those, narrow, those airways narrow okay. and they can become mucus filled and that makes it hard to breathe. Oh, wow. okay. So that's what goes on when you have an asthma attack or a flare up. It's, um, it's uncomfortable, it's frightening and it can be deadly. You know, you oh. can actually die of having asthma. So are there different types of asthma? Yes and no. Each person who has asthma is different. So if you and I both had asthma, mm -hmm. you may react to different things than I do. You may have different symptoms, different treatments. So there is a lot of difference from one person to another mm -hmm. who has asthma. Um, some people have exercise-induced asthma so that the trigger that causes their asthma flare-ups is exercise. Okay. Some people react to um, different allergens in the environment like dogs or cats or uh, smoke or um, cockroaches or those kinds of things, dust. I mean, okay. <laughs> people react to all different kinds of things. Some people have or react to irritants such as strong fragrances. Okay. Some people even essential oils. I know those are very popular right now, but for some people that can cause an asthma attack. Mm. And then there are some people who are allergic to or react, not allergic, but react with asthma to things like cold. So some mm. people really have to be careful in the, we in the winter weather to make sure that their nose is covered so that they don't get that cold air inhaled and then cause an asthma attack. Okay. So it varies a little bit from one person to another. Okay, so how exactly is asthma diagnosed? There are a couple of ways you can do that. I think the most common way people think about it is to, when you go to your healthcare provider, mm -hmm. they do a history. They talk about what do you have, what are your symptoms, when do you have them, what do you notice? So that's the first step. You could also go on from there if necessary, and some, sometimes doctors, particularly if it's not terribly um, severe asthma, that may be as far as they go, they would give you some medication and move on from there. 
If you have more severe asthma, they can send you to a pulmonary specialist and have pulmonary function tests or lung tests okay. to evaluate your lungs specifically for asthma. So when they're doing that history, the things that they ask are, for instance, symptoms for asthma. Mm -hmm. One of the main symptoms, one of the big symptoms is a cough, particularly if you cough during the night. Mm. Sometimes people with asthma don't even recognize that as an asthma symptom, but they are coughing off and on all night. And um, they also may have wheezing, they may have chest tightness where it feels like there's an elephant sitting on your chest. Okay. They may have trouble feeling like they're either having trouble, they're short of breath, feeling like they're either having trouble breathing in or breathing out, really yeah. e any of those things. Those are the typical asthma symptoms. So mm -hmm. if you were, okay. if we were talking about that, you would go over those symptoms. Okay, so um, are people born with asthma or can they develop it um, at any time in their life? They can develop it at any time. It's not something you're typically born with. Okay. So, and actually people are sometimes he hesitant to diagnose it specifically in children mm -hmm. under the age of two because mm -hmm their airways are so small that when they have any kind of respiratory, uh, upper respiratory infection, a cold or something, they mm -hmm. may wheeze, they may have some of these symptoms right. associated with that one thing. Right. And then that get, gets better when they recover. So typically they're a little hesitant to diagnose asthma before the age of two, but really from then on up, People are, people are diagnosed with asthma. My grandfather was diagnosed when he, he was in his 70s. Wow. So it really can be any time during the life. So are there certain risk factors for people uh, potentially to obtain or get asthma? As an adult, if, depending on where you work, some adults work in places where they are exposed to different things that bother their lungs and can, can create asthma. So that's something that moving, once you get into adulthood, that can mm -hmm. happen. Um, obesity is a strong, uh, has a strong correlation with asthma. Mm -hmm. So people who are more obese are more likely to have asthma and vice versa. Okay. So it goes both ways. Sometimes uh, babies who are born premature and maybe have diff respiratory difficulties when they're born, they're more likely, but it's not a, a connecting the dots that this caused that. It's okay. just, it's sometimes uh, more common. Okay. Is every person who is diagnosed with asthma, um, do they have an asthma attack? And if so, how are asthma attacks treated? Those are really great questions. Um, again, sometimes people ha are diagnosed with asthma and don't realize what they're having is asthma symptoms, like I said, okay. with the coughing. Some people, we hope, never get to the point where they're having a true asthma, severe asthma mm -hmm. attack. Um, some of them, that's their first indication or the first time they realize that they have asthma, in fact, is that they have a full-blown asthma attack. Mm -hmm. Ideally, if you're diagnosed with asthma, if they have talked to you, identified this, maybe you've had the pulmonary function test and realize you have asthma, you'll have what's called an asthma action plan. Okay. That asthma action plan has three levels, yet green, yellow, mm -hmm. and red. And the green is for when you're feeling great, everything's going well, and you feel fine. And most people with asthma have a standard, regular daily medication they take. Okay. And so if you're in that green zone, that means you're taking your regular medication, things are going well. Mm -hmm. No symptoms at all. If you get into the second zone, that yellow zone, you may be having some symptoms. You may be waking up coughing or maybe doing a little wheezing during the day. Maybe you have, maybe the air outside is, you know, we have those, right. those alerts. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's bad air quality and you're feeling a little worse. Right. That asthma action plan, and this is all developed with your doctor. Okay. That asthma action plan would then say, well, if you're having these symptoms, do this thing. And it may be adding a different medication. It may be avoiding triggers, making sure that you're staying away from those. Mm -hmm. And ideally, if you do those things, then you'll go back up to the green. Okay. Unfortunately, sometimes that you move down into the red zone, which is the asthma emergency. And as I said, people can die, can and do okay. die of asthma. So if you do go down into that red zone, that's when you call the squad, you go to the emergency department, you need immediate care. Okay. And there are often, one of the things that you get is a re what's called a rescue inhaler or mm -hmm. a, a, a quick relief inhaler. Okay. So people with asthma, again, as you get down into the yellow into the red sections, they can use these inhalers, which has medication in it that work immediately to help you feel better. Oh. So ideally, you don't get down to that red, you get <laughs> maybe to yellow, use your quick relief and go pop back up into green. But you do need to be prepared. 
And it's not only, particularly if you think about children, okay. it's not just the children that need to know how to do this, but their parents, uh, their caregivers, if they spend the weekends at their grandmother's, the grandmother right. needs to know. Right. If, they are, if they spend one weekend with one parent, one weekend with the other, both parents need to know. Mm -hmm. The school needs to know how yeah. to address these things for the child. Communication is key and everybody needs to know what's going on and what to do if there is a problem, how to prevent it, mm -hmm. and then what to do if something happens. So do you all provide training for schools or community groups yes. for such? Okay. Absolutely. That's one of the big things that we're doing. Uh, we also are working with some other groups to do some training for sanitarians who come in and do home, visit it, home visits and look at your environment if you need that. Okay. Um, or community health workers. Yes, so we're working with a lot of different folks to, to make sure that everybody knows what the best practices are, okay. what the best treatment is, That's and good. so yes, we are doing a lot of training. Okay, so outside of medication, are mm -hmm. there any type of alternative therapies that work for people who have asthma? You always hear a lot of different things and different people will say, well, I did this and it, it made all the difference in the world. And I can never say never, particularly if you um, talk to people from other cultures. They may have different things that they have used in the past. The things that we know that work are the medications and avoiding those triggers. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any type of different dynamics from cultures um, as far as asthma where one appears to be more susceptible than another? Culturally, um, I guess I'm, when, I was thinking, when I was thinking about culture, I was thinking, say, uh, Eastern Eastern uh, medicine kinds of things. But if you, we do see differences in groups. Okay. For instance, in um, a lot of people who have socioeconomic difficulty, so okay. uh, they yeah. are much more likely to have asthma. When we look at data, at the health department we look at data yeah, a lot because yeah. we're looking at the population, right. so we look at a lot of data. Right. So if we look at data, uh, African American people ha are more likely to have asthma. Mm -hmm. um, the most likely people to have difficulty with asthma are African-American women who are poor between the ages of 18 and 35. Now, in younger children, it's African-American boys who have more asthma and more severe asthma. Mm -hmm. As they age, it changes. It becomes women who have that problem more as they age. So, but that is something that we do see. That is a definite difference. In Ohio, we don't have, again, looking at data for, is the way the health department does. We don't have as many Asian and, and Hispanic folks to be able to tease that out in the data, mm -hmm. but we do know that that is an issue. Well, definitely. Well, Laruna, thank you very much for your time and for joining us on today. Coming up next on Joy in Our Town, weight loss and obesity. Stay with us. We'll be right back.